You want to help me do my intro? Is that a yes? That's a yes. That's a yes. Alright. So, let's do an intro. Let's do it right. We gotta have attitude. We gotta have smoke. Because Richie said we were born as... We don't cuss on this channel, Salem. We are family friendly. We're not? Oh. Okay. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about why slow burning horror is making a slow comeback. <laughs> slow burning horror, for those of you who may not know, is a type of horror that leans more toward the storytelling than the blood and the guts and the gore, the shock value. Usually, it's the type of horror that makes you feel more for the characters rather than the villains which, as we know, a lot of horror doesn't do anymore. We all tend to root for the killer instead, like Freddy Krueger and Michael Myers. That's why these movies keep being remade and rebooted and changed and flipped. And This is why we keep getting them, because for some reason, we are a very sick society and we like to root for killers now. We need help. Can I get rid of people and just have cats? Please. Horror is an emotion. Its very definition is that it's an intense feeling, feeling of fear or shock or disgust. I mean, it's a noun. So basically, the blood and guts and gore and kills and all of these crazy things are merely an aspect of horror. They are not what defines horror. With slow burning horror, most of the time if you are rooting for the killer, it's because you just went through the entire movie not knowing that the killer is the killer. It's a cat break. It's a cat break. It's a cat break. It's a cat break. Break, break, break. Ozzy! You're so cute, Ozzy. Yes, you are. 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 There's no cat cuter than you. Not even your brother. Y'all are both equally cute. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. People are gonna think I've lost my mind when it comes to the cats. You take a movie like Blair Witch, which has its ups and downs. It's not, you know, the greatest, but the Blair Witch deserves credit for what it brought to the horror genre. There, there wasn't much that was like the Blair Witch at the time. And with the Blair Witch, it's completely a slow burning horror because you go through most of the movie not knowing what's going on, not knowing what's going to happen, not knowing anything because you're not seeing the witch at all. You're not seeing what's going on. You only see the aftermath. You're not seeing a lot of blood. You're not seeing a lot of gore. You're not really seeing any of it. You do get a really nice snot scene, though. Really nice. And then right at the end, there's just this couple of minutes where all of it comes together, and it's, it's terrifying. The first time I watched The Blair Witch, never after I watched it, but the first time I watched The Blair Witch, when I really did not know what I was watching, I was horrified. I was up by myself, I was watching this movie, I didn't know that they were actors, I didn't know that this movie wasn't based on something real because I saw where it was a found footage and I was like, okay, this is a real movie. And that terrified me. And then watching this entire movie, always expecting something to happen. It's that expectation of fear. I think it really drives the story for a lot of slow burning horror. Which is what good horror should do. For some reason, we tend to relate horror to the action rather than the feeling. And I think that's what slow burning horror 
is bringing back. Because there's a difference in being there for the disgust and being there to genuinely feel fear. I think we've forgotten what fear feels like and we've replaced it with knowing what that adrenaline rush feels like because there's not too many people that when they go to watch a horror movie and they see somebody being disemboweled that's actually terrified at that moment. It's not the type of thing where you go to sleep at night and you're like, I wonder where they are. Are they here to disembowel me too? But then I think of TV shows like Hill House. I think Haunting of Hill House is a great example of a slow burning horror and why it's effective. Because if there's one thing that they did, it was scare me. I related a lot to the different types of fear that they used in Haunting of Hill House, especially with Nell, who is a character that suffers from sleep paralysis. I suffer from sleep paralysis. So those moments where her fear was shown clear as day on her face while she was suffering an episode of sleep paralysis, I felt that because I understood that, you know, it really hit home because I know what that fear feels like. I don't know what the fear would feel like of being disemboweled. I would think that it'd be more painful than scary. But I do know what it feels like to be in an episode of sleep paralysis. And that's not fun. And it's, it's terrifying. So I think that these slower moving types of horror work so well because they're trying to bring back our humanity. And that's something that a lot of horror has lost. We go into these books and these movies and you don't feel anything for these characters. They're just there to be killed off. That is a, seems to be a very common belief amongst horror writers, both in film and in fiction, is that characters are there for the author to terrorize and to kill. They're not there to be people. They're just pawns in your little bloody game. And I think that's a really cheap move for a lot of writers. I think most people resort to that because they don't want to feel attached to the character that they're going to put through this. And I can't relate. I'd rather do the character justice by letting you know who they are so that when these things do happen to them, you feel for them, you understand what this type of fear is. I think probably the funniest thing is, is that people love to say that movies like Hereditary or The Witch or what was another one that's come out recently? Um, the Babadook, sort of recent, Hill House. All of these newer horror movies that are more artistically horror than they are stylistically horror? Is, what, is that what I'm thinking? All of these movies that are more artistically horror than they are physical horror or really... I hate to keep saying bloody and gory, but it shows how great of a writer I am when I can't think of any other words but blood and gore for this video. Take a drink every time I say blood or gore. How about that? Or take a drink every time I say slow burning horror, because I can bet you I've said that quite a bit too. You will be suffering from alcohol poisoning by the time this video is over. I think the funny thing is, is that these movies that 
have just come out recently, I hear a lot of, oh, well, they're boring. They're not horror. I fell asleep through it. I didn't understand it. It wasn't scary. I think a lot of people like to put that on it because they don't want to take the time to really pay attention to what's going on. They don't want to give a part of themselves to this movie to understand. They just want to enjoy what's coming at them. They don't want to understand what's coming at them. And the funny thing is, is that a lot of these movies that are considered classics in the horror genre are slow burning horror. I mean, take Psycho or The Exorcist. The Exorcist is completely nothing for like a good hour out of the film. And then all of a sudden we're hit with possession and all of the things that come along with that. We're hit with pea soup, quite literally. And I think the funny thing is, is that these are classics of the horror genre. These are considered the scariest movies of all time. And they do, they do this without a lot of blood. And they do this without these crazy kills. I mean, they surprise you with all of this. I guess I sort of wanted to say all of this to say that I think that as a community, we should be more open to being horrified rather than just disgusted. That I think that there's a good way to balance both, to be honest. Because there are times when you should be completely disgusted and it works because it terrifies you. Evil Dead is a great example of this, especially the reboot of Evil Dead. Because I can tell you that that entire movie I was genuinely terrified and it was mostly because of the gore and because of the situations that these characters got into. But I think that it also worked because I did feel for these characters, especially Mia and her brother. So watching them lose their friends, their girlfriend, things like this, losing each other, all of this going on, it was a great story as well as being completely disgusting and in your face type of shock. And that's very rare, I can say, in most fast paced types of horror. I think that's one thing that Slow Burning Horror does a very, very excellent job at, and that is actually giving us a story. A lot of faster paced horror doesn't really do that. I'm not saying that they can't do that because they obviously can. I uh, would say maybe from example Hellraiser. Now given that that's also based off of something that's been written by an author, I think that's also maybe a clear sign because a lot of Hollywood produced and written horror usually gets rid of the story in exchange for you know, gallons and gallons of blood. But I think slow burning horror does its job because it's able to give us a story and to give us characters to root for and characters that we actually mourn their deaths. If you're one of those people that have watched a movie that is in the horror genre and you fell asleep during it because it didn't have blood and guts and gore, then maybe you should look inward rather than blame the movie. Because it's likely that you suck, to be honest. Anyway, I would love to know your thoughts about this. Do you prefer a slower burn when it comes to horror rather than movies or in books? Or do you prefer a faster pace? Do you like being hit with 
the actions rather than getting to know the characters or the story? Or do you really not care about either, just whatever mood you're in? Because that tends to be me. Just whatever mood I'm in. So guys, that's all I've got for you today. Make sure you subscribe to my channel and buy my books in the description down below. Thank you for sitting here with me while we discussed the finer side of horror. And that's it. I'll see you next time. Kisses, my darlings. What are you doing? Lay down. Lay down. What am I? Cat seat? Just whatever. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I ever tried to make you move. I love you so much. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. You are just the cutest cat in the whole wide world. So cute. Yes, he is. Look at that face. He's so cute. Take it easy. Looky, 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 looky. We are family friendly. Stop showing your nuts. And here's Ozzy. FMO! What are you doing?